Did you know that there's a megacity built for millions of people, with its massive streets strangely empty? Egypt is constructing another megacity in the desert, set to house 6.5 million residents, and the world's tallest skyscraper. Surprisingly, not a soul has moved in yet, but the big question is, can they fill it with people? And then there's the audacious plan to relocate Jakarta, one of the world's largest cities, to a still empty plot of land in the jungle. So what's the story behind these peculiar new cities? And why are countries embarking on the ambitious journey of building cities from scratch? Today, we'll delve into the mysteries of these cities and discover whether they're a success or a failure. Our journey begins with Naypyidaw, the new capital city of Myanmar. Naypyidaw. Here's the story of a completely new capital city that was built from the ground up between 2002 and 2012. Today, it's the third largest city in Myanmar in terms of its size. However, it's not like most other cities. Instead of being bustling with people and activity, it's more like a ghost town. Not many people live there, and the reasons behind its creation are a bit mysterious. Officially, they built this city because the old capital, Yangon, was too crowded and didn't have space to grow. But there are hints that there might be another reason. The construction of this city was kept secret for a while, and it cost around $5 billion. Then, out of the blue in 2005, the government said they were moving their main offices 320 kilometers away from Yangon to this new place nobody had really heard of. The city is in a very remote location, with no easy access to the sea, which could make it harder for any potential enemies to attack. The roads are also strangely laid out, making it difficult to get around. There's even a massive 20-lane highway that's so big it could be used as a runway for planes. But it's not just for defense. In the past, the government had trouble controlling the areas around this new capital. So moving here is supposed to help them have more control over those areas. Naypyidaw is incredibly strange. Even though the population is growing about 6% each year, there are only about 750,000 people living there now. That's way less than the 9 million people the government originally thought would be there. What's even more unusual is that Myanmar wasn't the only country making this kind of move in 2002. In South Korea, they created the Sejong Administrative Sea. Sejong. In 2002, a plan was suggested in South Korea to address the country's uneven economic growth and the crowded capital city, Seoul. This idea has been a major topic in politics ever since. Seoul like many capitals, is packed with people and plays a huge role in the country's economy. In South Korea, this is even more extreme. Half of the country's entire population, which is around 25 million people, lives in the Seoul area. So in 2007, they started building a new capital city called Sejong, which is just 125 kilometers away from Seoul. The original plan was to move all government agencies to Sejong by 2012, but even today, about half of them are still in Seoul, along with the National Assembly. Sejong was designed to be a city that can take care of itself, with lots of green spaces and support for electric cars. It also has smart technology like digital signs you can interact with and automated garbage and food waste collection. But surprisingly, many people would rather endure a four-hour drive to work in Seoul than move to Sejong. People say that Sejong doesn't have enough transportation options and services to convince them to leave Seoul. Despite its modern idea of high-end housing and lots of green spaces, Sejong is criticized for promoting the use of cars and not fostering a sense of community. Sejong is just getting started. Right now, about 400,000 people live there, but that's nothing compared to the 25 million in Greater Seoul, as Seoul gets more crowded, polluted, and expensive. Families are looking to live outside the city. More institutions and businesses are also moving to Sejong as it continues to be built. In 2030, Sejong will officially become the capital of South Korea and the population is expected to reach 500,000 people. After that, the city is expected to grow naturally, but only time will tell if they can move all government functions to Sejong in the next seven years and if the city can achieve its big vision. But Sejong and Naypyidaw are not the only new cities being built from scratch. Many other new city projects are happening around the world, like NEOM in Saudi Arabia, Bitcoin City in El Salvador, and Egypt's new administrative capital. Egypt's new administrative capital. Here's what's happening with Egypt's new administrative capital. It's making big strides and looks like one of the largest and most promising new cities in the works. This city is massive and is being built about 80 kilometers to the east of Egypt's current capital, Cairo. When it's finished, 
it will be home to the government and roughly 6.5 million people, which is about 70% of the current population of Cairo. Right now, it's pretty much empty, but they're expecting the first residents to move in this year. Interestingly, it still doesn't have a name, and the Egyptian government is holding a competition to come up with one and a logo. So why is Egypt building this huge city? Well, you just need to look at Cairo for the answer. Cairo is getting pretty crowded, with nearly 10 million people living there, and the larger Cairo area has more than 21 million folks. They're expecting this number to grow to 38 million by 2050. In 2014, President Abdel Fattah El-Sizi suggested this big project to help with the growing traffic and overpopulation in Cairo. They're well into building it now, with government, housing, and commercial buildings going up. Even with the pandemic, construction has been on track. The government part is nearly done, and government departments will start operating from the new city in 2023. The new administrative capital will have an international airport, a sports and leisure district, a monorail to Cairo, cool mosques and churches, and the iconic tower, which is now the tallest skyscraper in Africa. But they plan to build an even taller skyscraper called the Oblisco Capital, reaching a jaw-dropping hike of one kilometer, taller than any building in the world. The city's being financed through land sales by the Egyptian government and billions of dollars in loans from China. A Chinese construction company is finishing the iconic tower. These ties to China create intense political debates in Egypt. People worry that this mega-project could become a city only for wealthy Egyptians, leaving Cairo without enough business and investments, which might lead to more poverty and overcrowding. The new capital city is definitely happening, but whether it's a success and how many people will actually move there remains to be seen. And just so you know, something similar is going on in Indonesia, where they're building the new city of Nusantara to replace Jakarta as the capital. Nusantara Starting back in the 1950s, the Indonesian government has talked about moving the capital away from Jakarta. Finally, in January 2022, the parliament approved a plan to shift the capital to a jumble site over 2,000 kilometers away on a different island. But why is the government doing this, and when will it happen? Jakarta is famous for being overcrowded and polluted. It's noisy and filled with motorbikes. With nearly 11 million people in the city itself, and about 30 million in the greater Jakarta area, What's worse, it's sinking rapidly and experiencing more floods. Studies show that a quarter of Jakarta could be underwater by 2050 if nothing is done. The main reasons are overusing groundwater and rising sea levels due to climate change. Despite a 47-kilometer seawall being built, parts of Jakarta are already being lost to the sea. This dire situation is why the Indonesian government is creating a brand new capital on the island of Borneo called Nusantara. Construction has already begun, and it's going to be huge, about three times the size of New York City, most of which is currently rainforest. They picked Borneo because it's more central and represents Indonesia better than Jakarta. The hope is that building news in Tara will reduce overcrowding in Jakarta and boost the economy in Borneo and across Indonesia. Borneo also faces fewer natural disasters compared to other parts of Indonesia that deal with flooding, earthquakes, and volcanoes. The project will be done in five stages, with the last stage aiming to be finished in 2045 when the population of Nusantara is supposed to reach 2 million people. It's estimated to cost $32 billion, with 40% of the funds coming from private investors. The government planned to move to Nusantara in 2024, but this now seems uncertain. A Japanese delegation withdrew their investment, so now the Indonesian government is looking to Middle Eastern nations like Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. China is also likely to play a big role in building new Zintara. As with other new capital cities like Naypyidaw, Xinjiang, and Egypt's new capital, it's still uncertain whether new Zintara will be completed and if it will attract many people to live there. What do you think about building these brand new mega cities? Would you want to live in one of them? Let us know in the comments. If you're interested in learning about another city built from scratch, you can watch our video about Saudi Arabia's The Line. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.